David, where is there for my Ekobaro? Your Excellency, the wife of our dear governor, Mrs. Rachel Omahe. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Ebony State, and their dear wife. Your Excellency, the former Governor of Ebony State, and the man who appointed me the Chief Judge. Now, welcome, sir. The Speaker of the House of Assembly of a Foreign State, my dear wife, Mrs. Lily and Wanko, the learned senior advocates in a great number, including senior advocates designate, they are welcome. Members of the chairman of the I defer to you, the Attorney General of Ebony State, and other members of the Executive Council, the Chairman of the three branches of the MBA, and other members of the MBA. We do request, sir, the uh, presiding justices of the Court of Appeal here. I apologize for, I apologize, my dear presiding justice, Court of Appeal, the new division. Presiding Judges, Court of Appeal, Yola Division, and other presiding judges of the Court of Appeal, and other justices of the Court of Appeal here present. My brother, Chief Judges, led by the Chief Judge of Kogi State, Chief Judge of, of uh, Enugu State, Chief Judge of uh, Edo State, and other Chief Judges here present. My brothers, Judges of Ebon State, Judiciary here present. I refer to you, the President of the Court of Court of, my Court of Appeal, and other judges of the State High Court, the honourable judges from other jurisdictions, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, my gratitude goes to the Almighty God for His grace and guidance that sustained me from birth till now, more particularly through the vicissitudes of my judicial life in Nigeria. To him alone be all the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today is very historic in my life as a minister in the Temple of Justice, in that it marks the end of the beginning of my 24 years career in the nation's judiciary. In the 24 years I served as, a, as, a, as a chief judge for a period of 16 years by special grace of God, I dedicated this eventful occasion to God Almighty. I equally appreciate the sacrifices all of you have made to honor me with your gracious presence. According to God's calendar, I was born on the 14th of July, 1954, in Ohenya Ezama of Ezar South Local Government Area of Ebony State, Nigeria. Although my father, Haichi Mwankwe, was a farmer, he has, he has passion for Western education and he greatly encouraged me to undertake academic pursuits. In 1962, I commenced my academic journey with my primary school at Our Lady of Fatima Primary School on Wafa Ezama, now Community Central School Ezama, where I obtained my first school living certificate in 1970. Later, I proceeded to Ezeko High School, now Ezra High School, Amozo, and had my West Africa School Certificate in 1974. In preparation for my university education, I enrolled for my higher school certificate, HSC, at the prestigious St. Augustine's Grammar School, Nkwere, Imo State, and studied from 1974 to 1976. Thereafter, 
I was employed as a teacher at the Government Technical College, GTC Abakleke, where I taught government and economics. I left teaching in 1979 to study law in the famous University of Ife, now Bafemi Awolowo University, Lefe, and obtained my LLB Bachelor's of Law degree in 1982. I proceeded to the Nigerian Law School, Lagos, and was called to the Nigerian Bar on 8 July 1983. In the one year compulsory national youth service, I was posted to Enugu State Police Headquarters, where I served from 1983 to 1984. After the service, I did my pupillage at Mogo, Ibik, and Go Solicitors, one of the most popular law firms located at number 6 Chima Avenue, New Haven, Enugu. When I finished my pupillage in 1990, I set up my own firm called Alloy Wanko and Co. Solicitors, then popularly known as Ezekuna Chambers. The office had its address at number 32, Chima Benue, New Haven, Enugu. While in legal practice, I was privileged to be appointed a member of the Governing Council of the Institute of Management and Technology, INT Enugu, and served from 1988 to 1992. In the course of time, in the politics of the old Anambra and Enugu states, I was elected as a delegate to the then Conference Assembly from 1988 to 1989. At the time, I served as, as the State Secretary of the defunct National Republican Convention, NRC, in the old Anambra state, and later in the old Enugu state, when it was carved out of Anambra state and later in the old Enugu state, when I, well, between 1992 and 1993, I served as a special advisor to the executive governor of old Enugu state, firstly on the House of Assembly matters, and later on rural development. When politics was gradually arresting my interest, one of my mentors and the then chief judge of Enugu state, Honorable Justice, Ezozobu, retired, admonished me to leave politics and join the nation's judiciary. As if God had spoken through his lordship, the military overthrew the Third Republic in 1993 and made me return to full legal practice. I heeded to the advice of my lord, Honorable Justice Ezozobu, and I was eventually appointed a High Court judge in the old Enugu state in 1995. So the journey that brought me to this ceremonial day began precisely on the 8th of November, 1995, when I was sworn in as a judge of High Court of old Enugu state. It was about a year in my career on the bench when our dear Ebony state was created by the government of the former head of state, General Sani Abacha, of the Blazed Memory, on October 1st, 1996, after 39 years of his quest. Consequently, I returned to Ebony State as one of the five pioneer judges. In about eight years later, precisely in the month of April 2003, I became the acting chief judge of Ebony State, and on 26th day of January 2005, I was confirmed as a substantive chief judge. From the depth of my heart, I remain grateful to our most gracious God who gave me life and equipped me with the grace to pilot the affairs of the state judiciary from 2003 till today that I am taking a bow. I feel fulfilled that the state judiciary now occupies a place of pride in our national judiciary, judiciary archive. And this is to the glory of God and benefit of mankind, as stated in the Holy Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1, and I quote, To every time there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven, unquote. The 80th day of November 1995 was the day for me to begin 
my career on the bench. And after 24 years, time has come for me to vacate my seat on the bench. It was an honor and a privilege without comparison for me to have been called upon to serve in the capacity of a judge of the High Court and later as Chief Judge of the Bond State for such a period of time. During the period, I served in various capacities, namely, I was a two-term member of the National Judicial Council and a two-term member of Legal Practitioner Privileges Committee. And from being a member, I chaired many of their ad hoc committees in the two bodies, that body of Chief Judge. And also, apart from being a member, I chaired many of their ad hoc committees. In the body of Chief Judges of Nigeria, I, was, I also served as its secretary. Every day I sat on the bench or hold any assignment as a chief judge, I silently thank God for the honor and privilege. My Lord invited guests and gentlemen on, the, on this auspicious section. I wish to align myself with the views of that of eminent juries, well-meaning Nigerians, and scholars in saying that no society can exist without law, and there can be only law with the judicial, without, there can be, and there cannot be law, any law, without the judiciary. There will not be national there will, not be, there will not even be national interest without the judiciary in a democracy, unless where the autocracy is disguised and baptized as such. A nation's judiciary is an institution for the protection and preservation of the nation's interests. When rule of law is made subject to national interest, the judiciary is then robbed of its vigor and value as the third arm of government. It becomes a toothless bulldog wallowing in the forest of an acclaimed democratic society. In a democratic setting like ours, the role of the judiciary in enthroning and sustaining good governance cannot be overemphasized. For the effectiveness and efficiency of its roles, the judiciary deserves to be strengthened and independent from the other arms of government. There is no doubt that every aspect of our national life is in their need of attention, and it is worthy of note that the judiciary is not exempted, especially as it is on its own, one of the three arms of government. The judiciary is burdened with the onerous task of interpreting laws passed by the various legislative bodies and is also saddled with the responsibility of checking the excesses of the other arms of government. It is by reason of the pedestal on which the judiciary is placed and by virtue of its responsibility to serve as a check on the excesses of the other arms of government that has brought the judiciary into sharp focus, which in turn gives birth to the need for the judiciary to be wholly independent. Independence of the judiciary is a concept that the judiciary needs to be kept away from other arms of government. This is cause that, that is cause should not be subject, subject of improper influence from other branches of government or from private or partisan interest. The concept is vital to the idea of separation of powers operated and practiced in Nigeria. Nigeria is a nation with a checkered history of democratic rule. The pressures mounted on the Nigerian political system since independence created instability in Nigerian politics. Hence, the judiciary could not carry out its role effectively. The first and second, first, second and third 
the first, second, and third republics collapsed, and a way was paved for the inevitability of military incursions in Nigeria politics, which truncated the Nigerian nascent democracy. Studies have shown that in a democratic state, separation of powers is indispensable and the independence of the judiciary is paramount in achieving sustainable democracy. The gamut of independence of the judiciary connotes that the judiciary as an organ of government should be strengthened in such a manner that judges should discharge their judicial functions without undue interference from the executive, the legislature, colleagues, public or from any quarter whatsoever. Judges must be given freedom to decide matters before them fairly and impartially, being regulated only by the available facts and the law. Independence of the judiciary guarantees justice to the citizens and upholds the rule of law human rights, and democratic system. In the absence of independence of the judiciary, the principle of rule of law will not be upheld, thus necessitating the inevitability of the collapse of Nigerian democratic system as witnessed in the First and Second Republics. It is therefore worthy of note that where there is an absence of independence of the judiciary, the rule of law which ought to be supreme, becomes subject to the interest of the executive and which interest can sometimes be referred to as national interest. Rule of law, by its nature, connotes entirely that everything in the governance of man in any society must be done according to law. This means that both the government and the governed must always justify their actions on law. The rule of law is the mainspring, the fulcrum, and the pillars upon which all governmental actions and inactions should stand. Assuming national interest is recognized, assuming national, national interest is to be given is pride of place. It must be done within the framework of recognized rules and principles to avoid dictatorial tendencies. The law would be the yardstick in determining the national interest. What, what amounts to national interest cannot be determined in isolation of the law. The law should determine what amounts to national interest. The rule of law is thus immutable and sacrosanct. The proponents of the concept of rule of law considered all necessary factors before drawing the curtain that the law should rule as, the back, as far back as 2000 BC. Aristotle had postulated that, and I quote, that he who has law who asks law to rule is asking God's intelligence." Unquote. John Locke, another early advocate of rule of law, had stated that freedom of men under government is to, is to have a standing rule to live by and not to be subject to the inconsistent, unknown, arbitrary will of another man." Unquote. In the case of Mohamed Bello against Governor of Gombe State and three others, reported in 2008, Eight Nigerian Weekly Law Report, Part 1514, at page 219, especially at 291 and 292, paragraph C, page Sanke JCA. I, and I quote, I thought I should perhaps further reiterate that in this country, governed according to the rule of law and democratic norms, 
the law is no respecter of persons and frowns at every affront and infraction of the rule of law once proved. It abhors impunity in whatever disguise. When the law stipulates that, that reason must be given for the exercise of powers conferred by it, then reason must be preferred for any valid exercise of the power, which thus cannot be exercised in disregard by the provisions of the law in a nation governed by law. Both those who govern and those who govern, those, both those who govern and those they govern are subject to the laws and must therefore operate within the ambits and coffins, coffins of the relevant laws. Anything less or else will endanger the rule of law, the very soul of every civilized democracy, wherever it is practiced in the world." Unquote. In a country that operates the principle of separation of powers, the judiciary is saddled with the constitutional power of interpreting law in arriving at any decision considered all necessary laws and facts, including national interest, before making a pronouncement which must be obeyed. Which must be obeyed. It is not the place of the executive or the legislature to choose which order to obey and disobey on ground of national interest. In fact, since there is a strong presumption of the validity of a cause order, it behoves everyone to keep faith with the order of the court or exercise the option provided by the law. The object of the creation by the constitution of the three, three and separate arms of government is not merely a matter of convenience on governmental mechanism, but it is based on vital it is based on merely but it is based and vital to preclude a, a, a coming of different powers in the same hands. See Attorney General of Bender State and Attorney General of the Federation. At this point, I salute the courage and realization of the present government under the leadership of President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, for granting financial autonomy to state judiciaries and legislatures and further set up the Implementation Committee. We are lucky the man representing the judiciary in that committee, Honorable Justice uh, Ajana, is here. So you are welcome, sir. His Excellency, on the 8th of, the, 8th of June 2019, which amended Section 121 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, created so much excitement within the judiciary and the legislature. This will not only give life to the judiciary in particular, but will add flesh to the arm of justice, to the arm of, for justice administration. It is indeed a right step towards the independence of the judiciary. He has indeed adhered to the yearnings of key players in justice sector. I thank His Excellency for his assent and further steps taken towards its implementation. I am hopeful that in, in sooner than no time, the implementation will kick off. One of the foci of the President Mohamed Buhari's late administration, like his predecessor, is to wipe out corruption in Nigeria before it kills all our sectors. Inasmuch as no sector is a second is a sacred cow in the fight. I thank the judges of a born state judiciary for their incorruptibility and sense of commit contentment while I serve as the chief judge. I enjoy you to continue to advance the cause of common, common and uncommon man in the spirit and always be guided by the words of the former president of the Supreme Court of Israel. 
Aaron Barra, who stated, and I quote, Adjudication is not an attempt to please everyone, but a firm insistence of values and principles, not surrender to or compromise with interest groups, but an, insist an insistence on upholding the law, not making decisions according to temporary whims, but progressing consistently on the basis of deeply held beliefs, fundamental values, and of course, the rule of law." Unquote. Therefore, I urge you, my laws, to continue to live above board <coughs> and shun all forms of character unbecoming and unethical of a judicial officer in order to preserve the dignity of the noble profession. At this point, permit me to as accord due respect to the eminent juries who I see as my mentors and models in my judicial career. I learned a lot from my relationship with them in the course of my judicial, <laughs> in the course of building my career and during my service at the National Judicial Council and Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee. Specifically, I salute Honorable Justice Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, PhD, the Acting Chief Judge of Nigeria, and his predecessors in office, starting with Honorable Justice Mohammed Lawal Wes, GCOM, Honorable Justice Salihu Modibo Alpha Begore, GCOM, Honorable Justice Idris Lebo Kutubi, GCOM, up to Honorable Justice Walter. Samuel Nkano Onoye, GCOL. I'm also grateful to the past and present members of the National Judicial Council, the Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee, and the body of Chief Judges of Nigeria. It was a great privilege working with you, and I'm grateful to you all. I must at this point pay glory and tribute to my lords, the Honorable Justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria and the Court of Appeal, who have in their lordship highly revered wisdom, adjudged this event worthy of your lordship attention. I feel highly honored by your presence. Thank you, my lords. In the same vein, let me, with a tune of solemnity, thank my lords, the honorable chief judges, with judges of the Federal High Court, Chief Judges of the Federal Capital Territory, Chief Judges and other judges, judges of the Federal Capital Territory, Chief Judge and Judges of the various jurisdictions who are here today. Their Lordship's presence is warmly appreciated. Members of the Inner Bar, the Senior Advocate of Nigeria, who have come from far and near to grace this ceremony. I thank you all very, very, thank you very much for coming. In a very special way, I thank His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Ebon State, His Excellency Engineer Chief David Mweze Omari, the Kobaroha, who in spite of all the hard economic times, has been of great support to achieve our annual budget proposals. In like manner, let me also use this opportunity to also acknowledge and appreciate the past executive governors of the state, starting with uh, His Excellency Dr. Chief Samuel Omini Ebu, COL, and his wife, Chief Martin Wancho Elechi, COL, for their various supports to the judiciary at their own times. I also extend my heart of gratitude to the Deputy Governor, my brother, Dr. Barrister Eric Kelechi, a PhD, who is a member of the noble profession, the entire executive members of the government and the Bonn State, and also the, judiciary, also the legislature. I also acknowledge the cooperation I also acknowledge the cooperation 
that we have been receiving from the State House of Assembly. Our synergy has indeed promoted good governance in the state. My sincere appreciation also goes to the President of the Customary Court of Appeal, a boy state, and all my learned brothers of our jurisdiction. My loss will have been a formidable team. Your Lordship's diligence and unceasing sacrifices have brought us this far. The wind still sits in the shoulder of your self. I thank God that I have this, mem this marked self and sound to face another chapter. A good part of which is to savor a refreshing rest. All I love to wish you is born voyage and to say adios amigos. At this time, I extend my feelings of gratitude to the Minister of Justice, Police, Prisons, and members of the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, Nabakeleke, Afriku, and Oneke branches for their role in the administration of justice during my time. I appreciate the Commission of Police and all the heads of the various security agencies in the state for their serenity and security of our environment and for honoring our invitation. Your Royal Highnesses, the traditional rulers who found time to be here today are all welcome. With some time of gratitude, I wish to thank the Chief Registrars, the Secretary and members of the Chief Registrar, Deputy Chief Registrars, the learned magistrates, directors, heads of various departments, and the entire staff of a Bon State Judiciary. All your contributions in the judiciary while I served and in making the ceremony colorful are immensely appreciated. Let me with gladdened heart acknowledge and recognize the staff that worked in my chambers and my court. You made the work precious associated to my office easy for me by your dedication, commitment, and sacrifice. I could not have had a better team than you. God bless you all. My gratitude is extended to my friends outside the judiciary for their friendship, which contributed a lot to fill the vacuum in my social life. Let me also thank my critics for some, for some of their criticisms that made me to look inwards and improve on my vision. Indeed, I thank all members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very grateful to my family members, to my family for their support, prayers and good conducts which in no small measure contributed to my success in office. I thank in a special way my dear wife, Mrs. Lillian Wang, Chief Mrs. Lillian Wangko, and my sons, Nemeka Wangko Esquire, Ugochuku Wangko Esquire, and Engineer Chidi Wangko, and also my daughter-in-law, Dr. Pharmacist Shoma Wangko, and my granddaughter, Little Miss Adora Olivia, you have been the source of my strength and joy. No doubt that my lifestyle and discipline as a judge might have infringed on your social political lives, but you were always ready to subject them to the standard of a judicial officer. My dear wife, I thank you very much, for I know that for me to have achieved this day was as a result of your great sacrifice. From this day, I will have enough time for you. My children and grandchildren, I appreciate all of you for your patience and your prayers. I love you all.
For 24 years, the peace of my mind depended largely on how quickly to get rid of accumulated work before me. There were usually, at any, time, at any given time, stocks of files to be attended to. This pressure was very intense in my office as the chief judge. But until that was done, I remained restless. Now that it is over, I have turned my back with great relief on that arduous routine. I keep wondering what kept me on for that long period. This underscores the judge's word. Judges are public servants who cannot delegate their duties, which are constitutional, and as such, the duties always stir them on their faces. To those who had expected me to act in a particular way, but were greeted with surprises or disappointments, kindly bear with me. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. And the judicial crown happens to be a peculiar one. Meanwhile, I am not infallible, and as a mortal, mistakes are inevitable. If I have made mistakes or stepped on their toes, pardon me, it was inadvertently done in the course of justice administration. With these words, I conclude my story and end my address. Thank you and remain blessed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Judiciary Auditorium Complex in the State High Court premises of the Salt of the Nation, Ebony State. And seated uh, right there, you're seeing uh, all people from the legal profession. We are at the valedictory court session of the Ebony State Judiciary in honor of His Lordship, Honorable Justice Aloy Mwiki Nwanko, uh, who is right now the outgoing Chief Justice of the state. Uh, he will be handing over to a new Chief Judge in a few days. Honorable Justice Anselm Mwigwe, we are told, uh, will be the incoming Chief Judge in Ebony State. But for now, this valedictory session uh, is to say goodbye. A very yes, emotional yes, day for a lot of people yes, in the legal uh, profession here in a boy in state and we'll be hearing a lot of goodwill messages from a lot of the people who are the seated at this auditorium. Engineer Chief David Mwezomahi, Your Excellency, the wife of the Executive Governor, Chief Mrs. Rachel Ovenomahi, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Ebony State, Barrister Eric Kelechi, with PhD, the wife of the Deputy Governor, my Lord, the Chief Judge of Ebony State, Honorable Justice Aloy Wanko, CON. Your Excellency, the first Executive Governor of Ebony State, Senator Dr. Sam Ominyabu. My Lords, the Justice of the Supreme of the Court of Appeal, the Chief Judges of the State Judiciary, my Lord, the Judges of Ebony State Judiciary. And other judicial divisions here are present. For want of time, please let me rest on the protocol already established. An address presented by me at the valedictory court session of the Bon State Judiciary in honor of Honorable Justice Aloy Mamko, CON, live venture on Friday, today, the 12th day of July 2019. It is indeed a day of joy, and I feel highly elated to stand here today and address the gathering of eminent citizens from far and wide at this special session. Welcome everyone to this very auspicious occasion. We are here to pay tribute in honor of a unique personality and jurist of note, our own Honorable Justice Aloy Mwanko CON, life painter, as he graciously take a bow from the Bon State Judiciary 
after many years of fruitful and eventful, fruitful, eventful and memorable services, both as a judge and chief judge of a state, and to acknowledge his many years of service on the employment of judiciary and the nation. Indeed, my Lord Honorable Justice Aloy Mwango C.O.N. is a special breed in the annals of our legal realm. He can best be described as a father to all, a quintessential gentleman, legal enigma, a distinguished and detabilized Nigerian, an elder statesman, a fearless and incorruptible judge who sampled the act of taking charge and control of proceedings in his court without fear or favor. Undoubtedly, his lordship made several pronouncements on crucial issues like judicial, separation of powers and internal affairs of the state of lands, criminal jurisprudence, and other several landmark judgments and decisions on all areas of substantive and procedural law. The testimonies of legal practitioners that appeared before him speak for of his ever disposition and willingness to do justice to all manner of cases. Despite his schedule and the demand of his office as a chief judge and head of a state judiciary, his thoroughness and detailed nature of his judgments always beat my imagination. My Lord is not only endowed with strength and unquestionable integrity, but also legally and academically sound. In the case of State v. Moses Sabariki and four others, charge number HABCC 2011, my Lord the Chief Judge on the 16th September 2014, while delivering judgment in the above case, had cause to analyze in a most succinct manner the legal requirements of proving a charge of attempted murder and left no stone unturned in justifying the conviction of all the accused persons for the alleged offense. Thus, I quote, to succeed in the case of attempted murder, the prosecution must need evidence to show the steps taken by the accused person to commit the offense of murder. The last act by the accused person immediately before the main act that would have resulted in the commission of murder is an attempt to commit murder, provided the steps taken by the accused person are proved beyond reasonable doubt. In my view, the oral testimonies of PW1, PW2, PW3, and PW4 on oath and the host of exhibit standard on their behalf, it is reasonable to conclude by a tribunal that the accused persons actually intended to murder PW2 or at least cause him grievous bodily harm. In criminal law, to prove guilt, the accused must have done or omitted to do something contrary to law as criminal responsibility for conduct depends on intention. In the circumstances, it is my view that the accused persons, having come out of their houses armed with machetes, sticks, etc., have the intention of using them. Not only that they caught the victim, PW2, with a machete, they also caught him at the most vulnerable parts of his body, the head, the ear, and the eye. In my view, the accused persons brought out the machete, sticks, etc., with the intention to kill the victim, PW2, with these objects. And when they caught and hit him with the object, they did, they did that with intention to kill and could have actually killed him if not that he was rushed to the hospital. The strike on PW2 and PW4, who raised the alarm to save the PW2's life, nearly led the PW1 and PW4, a pregnant woman, to lose lives too. The accused persons were gruesomely murderous and barbaric. In view of the foregoing, I therefore hold that the evidence of PW1, PW2, and PW4, which corroborated the evidence of the investigating police officer PW3, shows conclusively that the accused persons attempted to kill PW2 on the 15th February 2011. Unquote. Distinguished guests, the above excerpts represent the thoroughness and various brands of judgment the man we are celebrating today is known for. It is imperative to note that the conviction and sentence of the accused persons in the case under review was also affirmed by the Court of Appeal Enugu Division. The above is also one out of the numerous judicial authorities his lordship in his wisdom and erudition used to register his name in the sands of time to the benefit of mankind. His lordship, to say the least, has become an inspiration and role model to many, especially the younger jurists and even the bar. His Lordship returned and retained the lost glory of the bench by being hard-working, brave, articulate, courageous, open-minded, and friendly in portions of justice, which has evidently manifested his numerous decisions and notable pronouncements. 
It is pertinent to also state beyond my, my law's basic court assignments, his administrative charisma and prowess is imperatively noteworthy. Suffice to say that his appointment as the Chief Judge of Ebon State in 2003 heralded the transform transformation of Ebon State Judiciary, which is now into a 21st century standard. My Lord's first assignment on his inauguration was to bridge the gap between the executive and the judiciary, and also to establish the judicial independence from other arms of government. His achievements in this regard have gave, given rise to the present cordial relationship and synergy between the judiciary and the other two arms of government. Consequently, the challenges of welfare packages and other accountants, which he thought confronted the state judiciary, are now things of the past. I therefore make bold to say that attraction in judicial pronouncements, in judicial appointments into the Ebony State High Court and the lower bench today is because of the standard and legacy of my Lord, Honorable Justice Aloy Wang. The office of the Chief Judge necessarily involves the administration of men, resources, time, and equipment. He believes and insists on strict accountability and fairness in the performance of his administrative duties. His doors are always open. Furthermore, the Ebony State Judiciary under my Lord's regime also got expanded with the creation of many judicial divisions and magisterial districts across the state. Several infrastructural and physical developments were carried out during his period as Chief Judge. Time may not permit me to highlight all these accomplishments in that regard, not to mention the modern buildings consulted to house the courtrooms. The Ebony State Judiciary Headquarters is also left, not left out by my Lord's administrative initiatives. He will all, agree, will all agree with me that a regular visitor to the Ebony State Judiciary after the creation of Ebony State and sometime before 2015 would surely not find his way around due to the complete transformation of the courts and its surroundings. As chairman of the Judicial Service Commission, he performed his constitutional role with candor, courage and effectiveness with the support of our members. Several persons were appointed as staff of judiciary he facilitated the appointments of magistrates, judges, and judges of the appellate courts, senior advocates of Nigeria across the nation. Several judicial divisions and magistrate districts created to bring justice to the grassroots and minimize the sacrifice and expenses incurred by litigants in the past. Errant staff received appropriate punishments, deserving staff promoted regularly and consistently without undue delay. As the head of judiciary, his lordship maintains a peaceful, fruit and cordial relationship with executive and legislative arms of government. There are no reported cases of friction with any of the organs. His reign as chief judge has witnessed stability in polity and government of Ebony State. This harmonious and symbiotic relationship did not in any way compromise the independence of the judiciary, which he protected with zeal and favor. Among judges, he has always emphasized the truism and the fact that he only possesses concurrent or coordinate jurisdiction with them and therefore not interfere or influence them in the performances of their judicial duties. He has an excellent relationship with the bar. The bar and the bench work together in the effective administration of justice in the state. My Lord has done well in all spheres of his life and endeavor. My Lord on left justice. A.N. Wangwo is one man who loses sleep over the problems of others. He is indeed a go-getter and ozibondo. His selflessness, driven by his love for equity and fairness, pushes him into championing the cause of others. I recall when the law officers of my ministry were confronted with the problem of mobility. Although my lord was not directly in charge of the Ministry of Justice, he nevertheless added his voice at different fora in requesting the government to pay attention to the disturbing plight of the officers in the Ministry of Justice. This was actualized. His name when mentioned anywhere across the door, across anywhere opens the door of opportunities to the youth, the aged, and the helpless. I can go on, but for want of time. Again, I greatly rejoice that his lordship having meritoriously completed his call for service at the bench, is barren out not only hell and healthy, but with untainted and questionable reputation, made of dignity and integrity. On the other hand, I will miss my Lord both in his court and in our Judicial Service Commission meeting, where he is the chairman. I feel like having power to single-handedly amend the provisions of Section 291 sub 2 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 
has amended to extend his lordship time of judicial service, but I certainly have not. <laughs> it will be unfair to end this address without congratulating His Excellency, the Governor of Ebony State, Engineer Dr. David Wezo Mai FNSC FNET, who as an ardent believer in the doctrines of rule of law and separation of powers, has maintained a level playground in the state for justice to thrive. Same has manifested on the peace and progress largely recorded in Ebony State. His Excellency has given Ebony State an enviable facelift, both in staff welfare and infrastructural development, and more are still underway in favor of judiciary and the Bonyans in general in this second tenor. Finally, I once again congratulate the celebrant on this well-deserved meritorious age of retirement, together with his family and mostly the wife of his lordship, Chief Mrs. Lillian Wangwa, for allowing his lordship to focus on his judicial functions for decades with lesser time for the family. That goes with the saying that behind every successful man, there is a stable woman. And it is this disability that allowed his lordship to thrive for the region of years, despite some challenges associated with human life. I revert to you, Ma, for this singular and rare quality. Ladies and gentlemen, as today marks the end of an era, it is not a day for goodbye and tears, but one of jubilation and thanksgiving for God, to God for years of meritorious service to mankind. My Lord, as you dance gallantly to the beats of retirement, we thank you for your uncommon passion and dedication to duty throughout your years as a judicial officer. This is your time to truly celebrate. You have labored. It is time to reap the fruits of your labor. My Lord, it is my prayer that your life and health after retirement will even be better so that you will have more time to serve God your maker. Congratulations and happy birthday. In adversity. And there you have it, the speech there by the Attorney General of the State Barrister, Kletus Ofoke. Of course, it is the end of an era here in Ebony State. And if you're just tuning in, we are at the valedictory court session of the Ebony State Judiciary in honor of His Lordship, General, uh, Honorable Justice. Aloy Winky Wanko. Uh, we will be listening to a speech next by the most senior advocate of Nigeria who's present and they'll be giving us uh, that information soon. And he'll be mounting the podium immediately. To make his application.